Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Disney Dudes, the happiest fan show on Earth. All the way from California, I'm Kevin. And all the way from Florida, I'm William. Hey, hey, William. What, what, buddy? Nine. Nine? Nine. 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 German for no, because I cannot believe that we are on episode nine. Whoa, episode nine? That's crazy. Didn't we just start yesterday? No. Oh, nine. Okay. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> we have nine D6 likes on Facebook. Oh, nine. Nine? 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't. Well, let's just, um, let's just move along right now. Uh, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Roll it! Welcome to Non-Noticeable News. Hey, Kevin, do you have some news? I sure do, Billy. Disneyland is going to have a new... Frozen themed float. This was a float that Disney has during Christmas time, where Mickey and Minnie will ice skate around it to a lot of wintry themed tunes. But now they're going to put some things from Frozen on it. But it's unknown when this float is going to premiere. The artwork has already been official, but it's not known if it's going to be during Christmas time or if it's going to be part of the Soundstational Parade. Also, Disney is making a live-action version of Beauty and the Beast, and Bill Condon is rumored to be directing it. Also, a trailer for Kingdom Hearts 2.5 HD Remix was just released with a Kingdom Hearts 3 teaser at the end, and there's an official release date for Kingdom Hearts 2.5, but not for 3, and this will be more explained in Kevin's Kingdom Hearts Corner. But moving along, Disney promises that Princess Leia will have a bunch of new toys coming out soon for more Star Wars product. Also, James Robin is directing the sequel for Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, and Sacha Baron Cohen is rumored to be casting as the next villain for the movie. And that's all the news I have right now. So, what do you got, Billy? It looks like we now have an official name to call what many have been calling Avatar Land at Animal Kingdom. James Cameron spoke about the new section coming to Animal Kingdom in 2016 at the Los Angeles Times Hero Complex Film Festival. He mentioned it's going to be called, I believe, Pandora, the Land of Avatar. He has also discussed some of the advances Disney Imagineers are making in their audio animatronic division especially the new Navi audio animatronics. He also says it's going to have floating mountains. It's pretty cool. I've seen the model and the design work the Imagineering people have done is spectacular. They've got a quarter inch to a foot scale model of the whole park. And I looked at the sight lines. It's not a park. It's a land within the park. But a land is not just a ride. There will be several rides and a number of other attractions. It's really a place you're going to want to go to hang out. It's going to be gorgeous. Of course, it's going to be gorgeous at night. And they're using every new trick, every new bit of technology that they have created. Pandora, the land of Avatar, is slated to open sometime in 2016 or 2017. Around the same time, Avatar 2 and 3 will be hitting theaters. Now, if you're excited for the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie, you don't have to wait much longer to see some footage. At Disneyland Park in California, you can catch this limited time intergalactic preview in 3D with special in-theater effects at the Magic Eye Theater in Tomorrowland, where Captain EO is typically shown. For those visiting Walt Disney World Resort in Florida, you'll be able to experience the same cosmic adventure of Guardians of the Galaxy at the ABC Cell Studio at Disney's Hollywood Studios, presented in Real D 3D. This will be replacing the current Maleficent sneak peek attraction in that very space. 
Guardians of the Galaxy finds space adventurer Peter Quill, the object of a bounty hunter, after stealing an orb coveted by the treacherous villain. But when Quill discovers the power it holds, he must find a way to rally the quartet of ragtag rivals hot on his trail to save the universe. Guardians of the Galaxy releases in the U.S. theaters August 1st, 2014. And here's my final piece of news. Disney Jr. has announced The Lion Guard, an animated sequel TV movie and series geared toward kids aged 2 through 7 and their families. The Lion Guard will start as an animated TV movie in fall 2015, with a subsequent series set for an early 2016 debut on the Disney Jr. channel and Disney Jr. on Disney Channel. The Lion Guard begins as Keon, the second-born cub of Simba and Nala, assumes the role of leader of the Lion Guard, a group of the bravest and brightest tasked with preserving the Pride Lands. Instead of assembling a team of young lions to serve with them, Keon challenges traditions by calling upon friends he believes are the best choices. Bunga, a fearless honey badger. Fooly, a confident cheetah. Bestie, a happy-go-lucky hippo and Ono, an intellectual egret. Stories will include special appearances by Mufasa, Timon, Pumbaa, Rafiki, Zazu, and Keon's older sister, Kiara, the future queen of the Pride Lands. The voice cast has not been announced yet, though wildlife education experts at Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park will serve as consultants on the telepic and series, which will include conservation themes. Author and Swahili expert Sarah Mirza will serve as the language and cultural advisor. And that's all I got, Kevin. All right, well, let's move along. Hello, and welcome to the ride review. So, what's our subject today, William? Under the sea. Ba -da -da -do 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 Under the sea. <laughs> the only reason being is that you guys in California got a lot of updates to your ride. Yeah. But like, like what, Kevin? Well, we got a blacklight effect where the ride now has a lot of fish, and the blacklight effect now gives a better illusion that you are under the sea, and the the Under the Sea segment, where they sing the song, has a lot of more black light in it, and it's no more regular lights, it's just black light. And the scene is now more better than I expected. It's better than I expected. It blows me away every time I go on the ride. It's, I love it. Did you know that also, John Lasseter, when they worked on the ride, he, during the scene, kissed the girl. He wanted all the vehicles to go slowly, just so people on the ride could look at it from certain angles. You can see that, that was his sense. favorite part of the ride. And does it do it? Yeah, it slows down some of the vehicles for that one scene. That's cool. I'm, I'm very jealous of you guys, because we still have the bright... I never understood why it was so bright in that section. I'm like, we're still under the sea. I can see the lights on the ceiling. And you guys... Well, because you guys, guys, have, you guys have the same thing. Right, but you got more fish in that whole section. You guys are such stealers over in Florida. Hey... It's not our fault. It's not your fault, but it's the Imagineers that are so lazy's fault. Well, they planned it that way because they built two of every audio animatronic for that ride. They built two of everything for that ride. This but is our ride is more themed on the outside. Yeah, but it's the ride literally that does count. It does. It's like the Haunted Mansion. No one cares about the interactive queue. But I love the interactive queue. Well, how do we get to the Haunted Mansion? <laughs> I don't know, but you we, you said you talked about the queue. But anyway, let, let's, let's keep going. Let's just let's, keep talking. Let's get back to it. Yeah, so the ride is it's um the same in both California and Florida. It and is. it ticks me off because it's the same experience. I mean, for Peter Pan and, and I was going to say Snow White, but yours is gone. No. But we get the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Again, we're getting off. Ugh. But <laughs> now open. Uh <laughs> But anyways, the ride, it's the voice of the Little Mermaid. They're tell they're making you tell the story 
And it's an entire experience that will warm your heart as you go through the entire story of The Little Mermaid. That Earth so, animatronic is creepy. Oh my gosh, that's my favorite part. Oh, but fortunate. That's all I'm going to sing, just in case. Okay. I met Pat Carroll, the voice of Ursula. She's so nice. It's a good ride. I give it 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Because, mm. again, the, it's not some of the experience ride. kills it for me because... A little bit of the experience kills it for me because I know that there's the exact same thing over in Florida. I would have to give my specific version of the ride. Uh, 7 out of 10. Yeah, it's a fun ride. And I'm glad after how many years that... Ariel finally gets a ride? Yeah. Finally? Um, it's missing so much, especially that under the sea scene. It's just lacking in something, and they fixed it over there. I mean, but you guys just have the same thing. Right. It's, it's a copy. I mean, there's nothing much to say, literally. Well, why do you think we're getting off topic, then? And there you have it. There's the ride review. Yeah, all right. Well, let's just move along. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Kevin's Kingdom Hearts Corner. I've got my Keyblade with me, so let's do this. So for this week, we got a new... Kingdom Hearts 2.5 HD Remix trailer. And so throughout the trailer, you are looking at a bunch of new information and a bunch of new footage from the game itself. At the end of the trailer for the game was a teaser trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3. Throughout the trailer, the beginning of the trailer shows off the three promises that have been made from the first three games. Kingdom Hearts 1 being Sora's promise to return to Kyrie, Chain of Memories, which is Sora's promise to thank Naminé, and in 358 over two days, where Roxas promises to be safe for Xion. Also, there's a quote that says, one act closes. And then after that, you see footage of Terra's lingering spirit about to fight Sora and the gang. And if you might notice, the weapons that Donald and Goofy have are the weapons that actually help with finding items. So is there going to be secret items that Terra might drop? But anyways, it also shows that they added some deleted scenes in the trailer and that they've given them voices instead of just subtitles, which is really amazing. And we also get to see the clip where Xemnas sees Aqua's armor, which also got me thinking to another theory, which I will talk for another time. We also get to see footage from Birth by Sleep and the cinematic movie for Kingdom Hearts Recoded where you get to see full dialogue with Sora and Alice and Donald and Goofy in between some blocks. Are they trapped? Are they trying to get him out of there? Probably another deleted scene. And also an extended scene possibly for Maleficent appearing in Agrabah. And we get to see the full fight scene between Sora and Riku. And also, you get to see Sora see the data of Roxas as he explores the data version of Castle Oblivion. And there's also many clips that show extended parts for the cinematic movie, such as Mickey going through probably the Realm of Darkness, or a possible Realm of Darkness. Again, we don't know. And you also get to see Kyrie giving Sora back her lucky charm ever since the first game where she promised for him to bring it back to her. And then after that, we get a release date, which is December 2nd, 2014. I cannot wait till Christmas already. But then after that, we get a teaser trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3. It starts out with a bunch of static, and it says the next act opens. Because in the beginning of the trailer, if you've noticed, or like I said earlier, it says one act closes, and then this quote says the next act opens which leads into more dialogue quote, and you hear conversations between two people. Have you heard of the ancient Keyblade War? Many years ago, Keyblade wielders started a war over the ownership of light. Yep, the master loves telling that story. 
then I take it you also know of the Lost Masters? Nope. Where did you hear about that? On that land shall darkness prevail and light expire. But you knew that, didn't you? Now these quotes have been in many thoughts now. And there's a picture in the background of all these quotes of two people talking in between the three for Kingdom Hearts 3. And through many people on the internet trying to find out what the heck they are, there are many pictures that people have posted of, of more of what the silhouettes are like. But it has already been confirmed that the two people that are talking are young Master Xehanort and a young Master Ericus. And what about these so-called Lost Masters? Are they people that we're going to meet in Kingdom Hearts 3? Well, we don't know. But that's all I can say right now for Kevin's Kingdom Hearts Corner. This trailer has also led me to think up more theories for future episodes. But until then, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Hello, this is Judge Frollo, and you are watching The Disney Dudes. Or whatever the heck a dude is. But anyway, here is a word from our sponsor. Not from the creators of Cars and Planes. Disney Pixar present Tanks, Joint Bruiser, Motorhead, Crusher, Thrasher, and Tony on an explosive adventure to find the meaning of friendship and teamwork exploding in a theater near you in digital 3D coming soon and now, and now it is time, time for William, William World Rumors here's the rumor so it's rumored that Princess Aurora is getting evicted from Princess Freyta Hall really? And then Princess Anna and Queen Elsa will be splitting up as well. Anna on one side, Elsa on the other. They're supposed to be together. If people want to meet them together, they don't want to go meet Queen Elsa on one side and then Princess Anna on the other. They want to meet them together. And what's up with Disney evicting their characters? Pooh and Tigger last week from Animal Kingdom. I could go on and on about this. But that's William's World Rumors and let's hope that this is only a rumor. A gigantic tire stops just millimeters from Woody's nose. Petrified, Woody inches away from the tire, moving back under the truck until he bumps into Buzz. According to my nav computer, the- Shut up! Just shut up, you idiot! Sheriff, this is no time to panic. This is the perfect time to panic! I'm lost, Andy is gone, you're gonna move from their home in two days, and it's all your fault! My fault? If you hadn't pushed me out the window in the first place. Oh yeah? Well, if you hadn't shown up in your stupid little cardboard ship and taken away everything that was important to me. Don't talk to me about importance. Because of you, the security of this entire universe is in jeopardy. What? What are you talking about? Right now, poised at the edge of the galaxy, Emperor Zark has been secretly building a weapon with the destructive capacity to annihilate an entire planet. I alone have information that reveals this weapon's only weakness. And you, my friend, are responsible for delaying my endeavors with Star Command. You are a toy! You aren't the real one, like you? Oh, you're an action figure! You are a child's plaything! You are a sad, strange little mouse. And you have my pity. Farewell! Oh yeah, well, good rinse, ya loony! So here's a Star Wars joke for ya. How does Luke Skywalker walk through the forest? He walks! Now, if you weren't a Star Wars fan before, you're not a Star Wars fan now. This is what an Ewok looks like. It makes sense. If, if Never mind. And that's a poke at a joke, and I'll poke at you later. And that about wraps it up for this episode of the Disney Dudes. But before we leave, um, I just want to say something. I just bought myself a, um, a hot tub.
I am just setting it up right now as we speak. It's really warm and cozy in here. And um, some guy on eBay, um, I bought it off of him for 45 bucks, and he wanted me to test it out. He said it was a hot tub time machine. I'm still looking for the control pad somewhere on this. Well, I don't I'm, believe it. I don't believe it. I'm just taking a little swim, and I'm just trying to look for it. But in the meantime, just you said you had something to say, Billy. Why don't you go say it? We got, we got some shout-outs to do. Uh, the first shout-out is going to go to... My girlfriend Amanda, because she's been supporting us since day one. And another shout out will go to Holly, who says she watches the Disney Dudes and she likes it as well. Oh, hey, you know what? Um, I think I found the control panel. Now let me test out this baby. Well, hey, hey, it's working. Hey, it's working. Hey, it's working. Hey, 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 I'm, I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna go now. I'll try to send some emails. Whoa, 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 Kevin? Kevin? Um, hi guys, it's me and it's not the Williams show. It's still the Disney dudes, I uh, think. So, uh, I, I don't know what to do. I'll just, I'll just finish the show. So, please like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Disney dudes if we're still around. And, um... You can follow us on Twitter at the Disney Dudes, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. And hopefully, we'll have a new episode. So until next time, TTFN. Ta ta for now. <laughs> Bye.